On today's episode, this weird shape may be the future of air transportation. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. We've all flown commercial airliners, and one thing about the experience has been common to us, our parents, and even our grandparents. And that's a long cylindrical tube with wings and tail. Now, there are good reasons for this. As every engineer knows, a circle encloses the maximum area for a given circumference. And in three dimensions, this means the least structure, which also means the lowest weight and the smallest surface area, which is critical for aircraft design. But the biggest reason for that big tube is pressurization. There's a reason why pressure vessels are cylinders and spheres, and that reason is again strength. But there's a price to be paid in aerodynamic performance in this design, and for decades, the vision for the future of airplanes was the flying wing. In America, Jack Northrop was the biggest advocate for this technology, and the YB-49 jet bomber prototypes of the late 40s were widely hailed as the way jet airliners would look in the 50s and 60s. Well, that never happened, and even today, even military aviation hasn't adopted the flying wing widely, despite the lower drag offered by eliminating the fuselage. But what if there's an intermediate design between the flying wing and conventional design? Well, there is the blended wing body, which uses the fuselage and wings to generate lift together. This also isn't a new technology and was tried in the 1930s, but modern structures and materials make it not only practical, but advantageous for large transport aircraft. Major airframers like Airbus and Bombardier have proposed blended wing bodies, but last year a California startup, Jet Zero, announced a project called Z5, an ambitious design for 250 seat transport. The aerospace industry is rife with paper airplanes, but Jet Zero has $235 million of U.S. Air Force funding to create a full-scale demonstrator by 2027. Greater efficiency in cargo aircraft is of obvious interest to the Department of Defense, but the program is also intended to spur development for the civilian market, and the design is intended to use industry-standard civilian engines, such as the CFM International Leap and the Pratt & Whitney PW1000G high-bypass turbofans. Now, how much of an advantage can be had using blended wing technology? Now, NASA has done multiple studies, and compared to the 12 to 13 percent lift contribution generated by conventional cylindrical fuselage designs, the center body in a blended wing can contribute one third or more of overall lift, with possible overall drag reduction offering a mid to high single digit percent increase in fuel efficiency. Now, for air freight and military strategic airlift, there may be other advantages as well. The internal form factor of the fuselage can be much better suited for cargo handling, with more of the load distributed span-wise instead of lengthwise, simplifying issues like center of gravity management, and potentially offering greater payload for a given aircraft size. For freight operators, the advantage could be considerable for shippers that handle large volume cargoes that would fill a conventional aircraft fuselage without achieving maximum allowable gross weight. The advantages for airlines would also be obvious, but there are a couple of disadvantages. It's unknown whether consumers would accept airliners that are essentially windowless, although external images on seatback flat screens has removed much of the resistance to center seating in twin aisle airliners presently. Another question is whether current airport infrastructure can be cost effectively modified to handle the shape of blended wing body airliners. Some design studies for flying wing designs have included swiveling landing gear that would allow the aircraft to slip sideways into gates for loading and unloading. Composite materials are clearly the key to making this work, and for aircraft of this size, considerable automation will be necessary for the layup and curing processes. Now, that's fine for the military, but will civilian markets accept this? Alaska Airlines has announced that they've invested in Jet Zero and will presumably be the launch customer for production aircraft. The airline anticipates a very ambitious fuel consumption reduction target of up to 50% and intends to use the reduced fuel burn as part of the airline's CO2 reduction efforts. Now, Jet Zero is a startup, but it's backed by government, a commercial airline, and appears to have good support from the FAA as well. So this paper airplane looks like it's going to fly. But will the major airframers respond? If it works, it's likely that one of them will buy Jet Zero or institute programs of their own. It looks like after a century of passenger air service, we're soon going to be able to ride in something truly different. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.